Please be seated. Thank you, Dave, for uh, making it loud enough for all of us to hear and not loud enough to boom. Welcome, one and all. This, uh, it's a uh, delight to see quite so many folks here. My count is we're over 40 tonight. That's the most that I can remember in two years. Anybody remember a day when there were more than 40 people here? We're, well, it is Christmas Eve. I mean, that's just fine. I'm glad you're all here. Thank you for coming. You are all welcome. Glad to see every one of you. I want to offer a word about communion uh, because of how we traditionally do things. Um, um, I have been asked not to say quite so much about COVID, so I won't. I'll just say we're going to do communion right where you are rather than around the room just to be a little bit safer than we might otherwise be. Um, so just sit tight or stand tight right where you are for communion. And we'll do it in the pews, uh, in the pews today. Um, you want to hear a joke about a deacon? Um, you're going to have to come tell it then. Okay. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for this day, this special day that we recognize and celebrate the birth of Christ. God, be with us in our scripture readings in our carols in our worship this day be with all of those who would like to be here and who are not able to be here and may you find pleasure in our speaking the word and our singing the carols of the season celebrating the birth of the Christ child this day in your name we pray. Amen. shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which it was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of one and only concerning him, who cries out, saying, This was he who of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. On this most holy day, we light all four candles in our Advent wreath, and we are reminded of the expectation, preparation, proclamation, and revelation of his coming. Now we light the Christ candle. We rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in a manger. Let's pray. Gracious and mighty King, we celebrate your goodness to us as we join the triumph and joy of Christmas. As your love has been revealed in all of its fullness, we pray that love may abound in our hearts during this special day. 
Grant us the spirit of Christ that we may live in the fullness of his character every day. In his name we pray.
The first gospel reading tonight is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Please listen to the words of the Lord. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cenarius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, <clears throat> to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth, forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Our next Bible reading is Luke 2, 8 through 11. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord.
The next reading is Luke 2, 12 to 14. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And if you'll rise and sing, Angels We Have Heard on High. The next reading is Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 18. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. <coughs> And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds.
2, verses 19 to 20. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, that the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as told unto them. Thank you all who were readers. Thank you for participating. As I listen to the choir, I, it, this is my second Christmas here, I think. Um, Laura, how many Christmases have you and John uh, celebrated Christmas Eve here, roughly? 20-something? 
Julie? Uh, how old is, 31? Is that all? Some 34? Okay. Robert? All of them? That's not a bad legacy. Larry? Go ahead, Janice. Well, he's probably been here for 73. 73? May? May? How many Christmases have you celebrated? I don't remember beyond yesterday. Okay. <laughs> I was supposed to be the funny one, May. Just steal the show. It's okay. Won't hurt my feelings. It's all right. Anybody been here more than 73 Christmases in Beulah? It, this, is, this is a really special time, it strikes me. Um, I've appreciated listening to, last year I read all those texts, and this year I appreciate you sharing them and uh, joining along. As we prepare to celebrate communion, you know, we're, we're transitioning, and I won't, I won't really preach, but um, I will just observe one or two things. Stop saying amen, David Driggs. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to... Uh, point out that we, we begin the service uh, celebrating the, the, the birth of Jesus, and this communion event was inaugurated very near the, his death. And so we sort of transition from birth to death in this one service. That's one thing I wanted to say. And the second thing I wanted to say is that David Vogel and David Driggs and I had the privilege this week of celebrating communion with Billy Grigsby and with Madeline Coates. Um, we visited a few other shut-ins this week, um, and we went, made sure that we took communion to them. Those are faithful members of this congregation who aren't able to be here, and there probably are lots of others. Uh, but I want you to remember them as we are here in the room. And there are folks out there watching, at least um, my wife and uh, her kids uh, and her mother are at home, and they threatened to watch. I mean, they swore they were going to watch. So I expect that that I'm, I'm buying y'all time to get your communion elements if you want them. It's up to you. Um, so. so toward the end of Jesus' life, um, he gathered his closest friends uh, in what we call the upper room. They shared a meal together. And when they had finished, they took bread. Let's pray for our bread. Pray before we, and you keep playing, that's fine. God, as we gather together as a family of faith, we are reminded of Jesus' birth, life, miracles, turning water into wine, the healings. We are mindful that he gave his life to save our souls. But before he did, he instituted what we call the Lord's Supper. So we ask your blessing on this thing we call bread. as we partake of the body of Christ together and in whose name we pray. Amen. At the end of their dinner, Jesus said, take and eat all of it. Even though it wasn't like that. When they had finished, Jesus took a cup and peel the cellophane off. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. You know, we think we know what that means. I wonder what it felt like to hear the very first time it was ever uttered. And if they had any idea what in the world that meant. I mean, these were covenant people. And they had seen lambs slain as part of animal sacrifice. And I'm glad we're not drinking blood. But we do have a symbol. Yes? To remind us of the blood that Jesus shed for each one of us. Let's pray. 
God, as we prepare our hearts and selves to taste grape juice, we are mindful for the price that Jesus paid for us. And yes, we will drink this every drop in remembrance of him. And in whose name we pray. Amen. Jesus said, take and drink all of it. So um, if you will stand right where you are and get your candles on the ready, John, are you going to light that over there? On Very good. So we'll sing um, Silent Night. I don't know if you can hold a candle and uh, a hymnal. If it's 91, if you need it for verses 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 13, and 18, or maybe just the first four. Just the same, just the first verse over and over? One time? So we'll wait till the candles are all lit, and then we'll sing one verse. There is both art and science to getting that candle lit. I think we're ready. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let us all go in peace.